I would be happy to do that. Awesome. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the times that we can share and laugh together. And uh, Lord, we thank you for the camaraderie that we have as a Rockford Lutheran family um, in all situations. And so as we uh, talk this evening about uh, the changes that are occurring in our society and in our school, uh, we ask, Lord, that you would bless us, that you would give us uh, open lines of communication, that you would guide us with your wisdom in the decisions that we make, and that you would allow us opportunities to make sure we can answer everyone's questions as we do the best we can for our students. So bless our time together this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so welcome everybody to uh, night four of our seven o'clock Zoom series. Um, today we're um, focused on co-curriculars. Um, as most of you know, I'm the athletic director, um, Henry Robinson. We also have um, our music department, Ms. Minalkin, um, on here tonight. She will talk a little bit. Our student council, uh, head of our student council, Ms. Ernst, who will talk a little bit tonight. Uh, Mr. Wootke. Um, RLA principal about some academy sports, Mr. Horn, who runs our RLA youth soccer, um, and Mrs. Schmidt, who um, runs our, um, uh, why is it blanking me, um, student life. She runs our student life department. So um, I'll start by, by going over um, some of the athletic stuff. Um, as most of you probably have seen, the IHSA, um, who governs our high school sports association, has come down with some new guidelines um, in regards to high school sports. So we will touch a little bit on that, but we're going to work from the academy up to the high school level. So we'll touch a little bit on some academy sports, some things that we're, we're doing down at the academy, some things that we're looking to do um, in regards to soccer and volleyball down there. So Mr. Horn, if you want to kind of go over what our plan is for um, junior high uh, Elementary yeah. Soccer yeah, so right now, um, especially with all of the changes that the governor instated with the Illinois Department of Public Health, the first thing that I saw was Raptor Youth Soccer League, which is almost a mirror to our soccer league, canceled. They just went right ahead and canceled. They didn't say a delay, anything. They just canceled. So it kind of instilled a, a concern in me that, okay, we're going to have to cancel because <clears throat> to a good fault, we get a lot of people that participate, not only our students, but the other schools that are part of it as well. And with the current guidelines, you know, 50 people per gathering, we're easily exceeding that. On top of that, just the logistics of the numerous volunteers we would need on top of whom we already have to help out. Uh, temperatures needed to be checked before games, different setups for the fields. It would just turn into a logistical nightmare. However, we, Henry and I have talked and we are kind of thinking it's on the back burner, but even though we won't have it this fall, we might look at something for the spring. And uh, it's not gonna move the same way that the IHSA schedule did, because we'll wanna do it in warmer weather. We won't want the kids out there when it's still snowing. Um, but we're still gonna look at, at options to potentially have it this spring for them, be able to get the season done during the school year. Then that way, those that go on to play summer soccer, baseball, summer basketball, uh, you know, hopefully knock on wood, everything is back to what would be a new normal or normal for us, and they can go on about their life next summer. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think you hit it right on the head. You know, um, a lot of a lot of this has to do with giving kids op opportunities, you know, moving things around a little bit, providing opportunities for our kids, our athletes um, to play the sports that they're, they're learning and, and loving um, and learning to love at the same time. Um, so we kind of have the same thing going on for, for volleyball down at uh, the academy as well. If uh, Mr. Wuki, you want to speak on that a little bit? Yeah, uh, same thing. I mean, we're not going to have a, a season this fall. Um, our hope is that we can have a volleyball um, in the spring. I'm still in communication with uh, some of the other schools that we compete against and trying to figure out um, what their plans are, which I think we're actually ahead of the game a little bit. Some people are still scrambling. Um, to figure out exactly what they're going to do. So um, that's our hope and intent is that we would uh, be able to have a volleyball season. Uh, of course, that's inside, so we could start a little bit earlier. We might start as early as, as February or something, too, depending on the other schools that we're working with, but it definitely won't be um, in the fall. Awesome. Um, and those, and now, go ahead. Those are just the two sports that we have 
um, in the fall. So there's nothing else that's affected at, at the academy. Absolutely. So now for junior high athletics, um, our junior high athletics is kind of governed by two, two governing bodies, the IESA and our LSA. Um, our LSA is kind of the state series that we participate in when it comes to our, our sports like cheerleading, uh, basketball, volleyball, cross country, track and field. So we look at LSA as kind of our governing body. Um, I did have a Zoom meeting this morning with all um, – First, I'll start by the IHSA, which is the Illinois Elementary School Association, has canceled all fall sports. They canceled their golf season, cross country, baseball, softball. We did have a Northern Illinois District um, meeting this morning, which is all Lutheran schools in the northern part of Illinois, and we have decided not to cancel all of our fall sports. We will run, we're going to run how the IHSA is planning to run. We will have our cross country season this, this fall like normal. And we will offer volleyball, girls volleyball and co-ed soccer in more of the spring season. Those dates are still being worked out. Um, some things that, that are coming up here, the Northern Comp, the NID is now setting up a committee to come up with kind of guidelines, how we're gonna go about this, when our seasons are gonna be played and kind of start building when we do have events, how those are going to look. Um, so, you know, this is all kind of fluent stuff. It's happening as we speak. Uh, these guidelines just came out yesterday. They're brand new to me. They're brand new to everyone on this screen. Um, there's a lot of things that are kind of in the process still and things that we're looking to get answers on as athletic directors, as um, organizations. So there's going to be some things that we don't necessarily have the answer to right now, but there are things that are set up and being set up to provide answers to the questions that I have that you probably have and we all have. Um, so the so some of those things is the LSA board, the Lutheran Sports, Lutheran Sports Association board is set to meet on Sunday, this coming Sunday, to talk about the LSA state series uh, when it pertains to fall sports. No decisions have been made on winter sports. Those are still planning on running as normal on the dates that they're supposed to run. But in regards to their volleyball state tournament, they're trying to see if moving into an option or just canceling the LSA state tournament as a whole. Even if it is canceled, we will still run a volleyball season and more of the spring season to allow those girls to have the opportunity to compete, um, you know, increase their skill level, be around each other and play, play volleyball. Um, the Northern Conference is who we are in a conference with. It is a majority of public schools. We are set to meet on August 11th. I'm trying to get that meeting pushed up to sometime next week as I think it'll be beneficial for everyone with school starting the following week if we meet on the 11th, um, just to get a little more information from them. That's just going to, you know, for you guys, that's just going to depend how our schedule looks. If public schools decide to go ahead and follow the IESA and cancel their cross-country season, um, for those that participate in cross country, we'll just see more of the, our, our fellow Lutheran schools at the meets that we will compete at. Um, like I said, the dates for volley, so that the only two sports affected for junior high right now are volleyball and co-ed soccer. Those are the two that will not be played in this fall, and we will be moving those to more of a, a spring season. Um, those dates are not finalized yet. I'm looking, you know, like Mr. Horn said earlier, don't want soccer outside, you know, at the beginning, beginning of February when you can't even play soccer because you don't even know what the ground looks like because there's still snow on the ground. Um, so, you know, looking at dates, coming, talking more with the NID and coming up with the best date possible for co-ed soccer and then volleyball. You know, we want to provide opportunities for our students, but we don't want our students to have to pick. Um, girls volleyball kind of runs in, the, in that spring time frame from the first of the year to the middle of February. So we're looking at kind of a March time and ending before um, track and field starts so girls don't have to pick in between sports. It's kind of the goal that, that I foresee and the way I would like to see it play out. Um, you know, how, like I said, how I'd like to see it, I want to provide our junior high athletes with the most opportunities to play the sports that they love and that they're learning to love. Um, also would like to see our public school conference, our, the teams in our, the public schools in our conference say that they're, they're going to compete in cross country um, and move volleyball to the, the spring as well. So that way our competition stays the same. 
and our competition level stays the same. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with junior high sports. Um, hopefully no more uh, as far as the conference goes. Um, sometimes next week we can get that meeting pushed up. Now for high school athletics, um, you know, the, the big news, if you watch the news, it was all over yesterday. The actual guidelines pushed out by the IHSA yesterday. They hit my phone, I think, at about 2.55 yesterday, and I had a news reporter in the office at 2.57, um, you know, getting reactions from our football coach and our, our um, and a couple of our athletes. You know, it, it was so quick that I had to ask for time just to kind of explain what was going on to my head football coach so that way he knew what he was talking about when being interviewed. Um, so they're fresh, they're new, everything's still kind of, you know, sinking in and, and we're learning we're learning as we go from the IHSA. I'm receiving emails from them um, throughout the day periodically with further protocols for sports and how those sports are going to look. Um, there are now going to be four seasons with the IHSA rather than the traditional three seasons. Normally we're fall, winter, spring. We are now fall, winter, spring, and summer-ish, I would call it. It's not all of summer, but it, but it starts in the school year and ends into the summer. Um, the sports that are being moved are boys soccer, football, and volleyball from the fall season to the spring season. The spring season will now be in February. So football, boys soccer, and volleyball will now play in February. Um, and that pushes baseball, girls soccer, um, softball, track and field off into the summer season, uh, which will begin in May and end in uh, middle of June, May 6th to June 20, 27th, I think it is. Don't quote me on that. Um, but the dates are out there and published. Um, as far as fall sports, boys and girls cross country, boys and girls golf, and girls tennis will continue to play as normal. Um, so th those sports will continue and start on August 10th, just as if we were normally running a fall season. So those, uh, they'll start on August 10th, competitions will start in uh, mid-August and they will run as normal, um, which is a great opportunity for those kids. It still gives us some sports in the fall. Um, those numbers have traditionally been low. So, you know, I've, I've had some people kind of, you know, and I know this is going to come up probably in here. Some people reach out and say, can my, can my student play four sports this year? Yes, traditionally they can. Um, you know, I, I, no sports overlap. Um, sport, there's no, no sports seasons overlap. They're all, no student will have to pick between a sport. Uh, we're starting to get some questions rolling in here, so I'm going to kind of answer those as we go. Yes, swimming is in the fall. I, I totally skipped over swimming. Swimming is in the fall. They are running as normal as well. It's a fall sport. They will be running in the fall. Um, where are we at here? So there's also... Yes, Mick, you can, if you can screen share what we have, what I have sent to you, that would be great at this point. Okay, we're going to pull up kind of just that all kind of in, in a summary here. Um, just kind of showing you visually. I'm a visual guy. That's kind of why I created this. So that way I have it. Um, I, if, if you've seen it in the media or seen it in the newspaper, um, they have a lot of other sports that we don't offer here at Lutheran, like badminton and, and rowing and uh, seem like the whole, you know, any sport you can think of. So this is, this is kind of a, a layout of just Rockford Lutheran sports, sports that we offer here at Rockford Lutheran. Um, so you can kind of look at that and, and the ones at the top there are the ones that are staying traditionally. The ones that are highlighted are sports that are being, uh, moved around a little bit. And on the right-hand side, those are the new start and end dates. So the fall sports will run from August 10th to October 24th. The winter sports will run from November 6th to February 13th. Um, the, the, not, the sports that got moved from the fall that are now going to be the spring sports will run from February 15th to May 1st. 
And then the spring sports that are being moved to the summer are now going to be May 3rd to June 26th. So that kind of gives you an idea of where they will be placed. And then you also see the, the column where it says IDPH risk. They have put all sports in a different in categories by lower, medium, and higher. Um, if, if Mick, you'll scroll down a little bit, it'll kind of explain what, what those mean and how those apply to, to specific sports. So these are the kind of the contact level. These are the levels here. Um, level one is, is no contact practices and training only. So if your son or daughter, if your son played football or your daughter was a volleyball player um, or a cheerleader, that, that's kind of where we were at right now. Where there was no contacts and revolved the practice, only training um, and no physical contact. No, level two is uh, intra-team scrimmage allowed with parent consent for minors, um, no competitive play. So we can start playing in-house inter uh, intramural type stuff. Um, teams can scrimmage each other, more of your traditional practices, if you would. Level three is interconference, uh, also intra-EMS um, region and intra-league play. So we can start playing teams within our, what the IHSA calls in the document a COVID region. Um, as well as within our conference and league. Um, and then level four is when we get back to normal of all tournaments, out of state, comp, uh, out of conference, league play, out of state play, and then championship games are allowed. And if we scroll down to the last page there, it will tell you kind of where, um, where we fall uh, with, with the low, medium, and high. So right now, low sports can do one, two, or three. So the low sports are your golf, your swimming, your cross country. They're allowed to do competitions within our COVID region and our conference. So this gives them an opportunity and that's, that kind of explains why the IHSA has allowed them to continue to play in the fall. The medium risk, which is basketball was under there, um, girls volleyball is under there, uh, I think soccer's under there. Those sports can be, they can do intra-team intra scrimmaging. They cannot go out and play competitively, but they can scrimmage within uh, the Rockford Lutheran family and within the team. And then your high-risk sports like wrestling, football, um, competitive cheers in there, they cannot do anything but what we were currently doing now, no contact, just training. Um, so hopefully that kind of explains that and why the IHSA has, has made the decisions that they've made. They tried to move all medium and high risk sports from the fall to a different spot so they have an opportunity to compete. Um, so once sports do um, resume in August, um, it kind of leaves a period for um, the sports that traditionally were in the fall, like volleyball and football. Starting September 7th, our programs will be allowed to use their contact days again. Contact days are what they normally do in the summer. They now have the opportunity to do this in the fall, and they will be allowed 20 of those running from September 7th to October 31st. Um, our, like I said, this is all new information. Our coaches were just informed of this yesterday. So we, they do not have individually devised plans yet, but they will be getting in touch with their teams, notifying the teams of when those dates will be, how those will look, um, I think I counted them and there's just under 40 days slotted. So there will be time for time off. Um, but it, it will give them an opportunity to be together, competing together um, and, and, you know, getting better at the skills that they're trying to get better at, as well as have some uh, what looks to be some inner inner team scrimmages. So moving forward, what, some things that are going to answer some questions, some kind of help, help us shape things athletically here at Rockford Lutheran would be, um, I have been a big Northern conference, which is our conference that we compete in as, as Rockford Lutheran. We have an athletic directors meeting at 830 in the morning tomorrow. Um, this will give us an opportunity to start talking about what scheduling is going to look like, um, for this intra, uh, COVID district, uh, COVID region, excuse me, as well as intra conference, um, for cross country. It's going to allow us for swimming to talk with the teams that do provide swimming. Um, and create a schedule with them. Um, 
as well as the sports that did get moved, volleyball. Um, it's a shortened season. Football, they're talking about only allowing, uh, only playing six or seven games with the option of two or three playoff games or potentially more, depending on where we're at um, in this pandemic when that time comes. Uh, but it, it's, it's going to change a lot of things. You know, if we're only playing seven football games, we have to figure out what seven teams we're going to play because normally we have nine games and play everyone in the conference. For volleyball, it's looking like we're going to be able to play on 18 dates. The state says we're not allowed to play more than two contests a two contests in a week. So 18 dates. We only have 10 other teams in the conference, so we're going to have to find eight other games. Um, but you know, this this meeting on uh, tomorrow morning will give us an opportunity to kind of start devising that plan, coming up with that plan, um, so that way I can start working on this reworking on the schedules because they were already complete and send them back out, you know, on 8 to 18. So everything that currently is on 8 to 18 is kind of null and void right now. Um, do not look to those as um, schedules for, for the fall. Do not look at those as schedule for the winter. Things are going to change. Um, although basketball, the, the, the dates didn't change too much, the, the time allowed and the amount of games that we're going to be allowed to play has changed significantly. Um, I think basketball is only going to be allowed to play around 17 basketball games compared to the normal 31. So it's, it's going to change a little bit, uh, but it, it uh, will work on, on kind of, you know, sculpting that to, to, to get it out there as fast as possible. Um, after that, I have an AD meeting with the executive director of the IHSA on Monday at 2.30. Um, I think this is going to be very beneficial for every AD in the state of Illinois. Um, it allows us all an opportunity to get on a Zoom kind of like this, um, and we just fire questions away at the uh, executive director at the IHSA, things that we feel were not clear or things that need a little more explanation to kind of help us um, start taking the next steps in um, – in our athletics within our schools. Um, so I always, I, you know, we do that every Monday. We have been doing that every Monday since this kind of began. Um, and it, it is very beneficial. So I, I'm really looking forward to that, to kind of start getting protocols out and, and figuring things out for when cross country begins to run, swimming begins to swim, um, and golf begins to golf. It, it'll start shaping those guidelines for them. Um, as far as guidelines go, we do not have sports-specific guidelines yet. Um, a lot of my coaches have been asking, what is a cross-country meet going to look like? What is a golf, golf turn, uh, meet going to look like? The only thing that they have said is it's looking like we're not going to be able to participate in tournaments. It'll be more like duels and tries when it comes to cross-country um, and golf and swimming. Uh, so those more sports-specific guidelines, I got an email from the IHSA, are supposed to be out sometime later this uh, next week. Um, Yes, I'm looking at the chat. Amanda, you are correct. Um, junior high golf is in the in the in a spring sport, so that will not be affected at this point at all. Um, and then also kind of labeled out in the guidelines that state series are a sport are are going to be determined sport by sport, um, and that'll be from the IHSA. I think that's going to have to do with you know, the, the time that those state series are supposed to be, be slated for, if the venues that they host those state series are going to allow them to compete at that time, and if time allows for it. So right now, they have not said anything in regards to state series for the fall sports. They're looking at what that would look like, and they haven't said anything for any other season as well. Um, you know, what I would like to see, um, I would like the I I'd love to see the IHSA plan, the plan that they have in place, run a, a efficiently and effectively. Um, I've talked to several athletic directors within the conference, um, and, and some of us thought this was going to look a lot worse. Some of us thought they were just going to take sports and, and drop them off the table and say, we'll get back to them in 2021, 2022. Um, but I think they've come up with a plan that really allows our student athletes to ha have all the opportunities to compete um, and, and play the sports that they want to play. They, they're not making students pick. They're allowing them to have an opportunity to play multiple sports in different seasons and not they're not overlapping, making them decide what they're going to play. Um, you know, and then as far as the AD meeting and the IHSA meeting on Monday and Friday, I'm really looking forward to those to kind of get questions and keep, uh, you know, fly, shooting information at our coaches. 
um, as well as you guys as parents, as I know you're all anxious and I'm anxious myself to get this, this all rolling. And then, you know, one thing I can't wait to see is sports taking place on August 10th. I, I oversaw another sport. Girls tennis is in the fall as well. No one corrected me that on, on the group chat, but girls tennis is the fall in the fall as well. So we have girls tennis, boys and girls golf, boys and girls cross country, and girls swimming all in the fall as normal. Um, so then, you know, for the other students that might not be doing, uh, their sport might have been moved, you know, we will still have opportunities for the weight room to be um, used and provided as well as the, the contact days that will be coming up. Um, and we also, you know, Mrs. Schmidt and I, she runs um, the, the student group. Um, so we have been talking about ways to kind of get the Lutheran community involved. Um, and if you want to talk a little bit, Ms. Schmidt, uh, and what you guys have been talking about, some things that we've been talking about possibly rolling out to kind of keep student involvement at a, at a, at a good rate. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, last year, Student Life put on a couple events. This is all um, student body based, just to build some school spirit and to give um, the student body something to do um, when school was not in session on the weekends. Uh, last year, they put on like a relay race in the fall, a couple movie nights. They did the lip sync battle during homecoming and then I think a dodgeball tournament. So um, there are five officers that lead that group and we have been in discussion. They've been working on, um, we are meeting next week. And right now they're just working on getting some things together that they can still do while wearing masks and uh, social distancing. So that's our um, main priority is making sure that everyone um, is staying safe and we're still following our guidelines. They uh, brought up, you know, an idea about maybe doing a kickball tournament outside, um, a movie night where you can still wear your mask out on the football field on Friday nights while it's still nice out, um, and a dodgeball tournament so far is what they have outside. So we were, we're still try to keep the kids, you know, um, involved and engaged and try to do some extracurricular activities. Um, Henry has graciously said he would help with that, but if anybody has any ideas or if your student would like to get involved in student life, they can just reach out to me and I can um, put them on and we can um, go from there. They're really good about contacting each other and polling the student body on uh, what they would like to see and what they would get involved in. Awesome. Yeah, so, you know, I think in these times what we're looking to do, you know, as far as what the IHSA has done and as far as what we're looking to do, um, you know, we're, we're really, really looking to just provide opportunities for these students um, to make it as, as normal as possible, um, you know, have the interaction that they normally have. Um, one thing that um, also has come up several times and something that's coming more potent in the world of athletics, if you would, um, is what they call esports. Um, that's something that we're looking at, kind of diving into during these times as well. Um, you know, I know during these times, your kids are probably staying home playing a lot of video games, um, maybe too much sometimes. But um, you know, this is something that um, I've had several conversations with many people, um, as far as Mr. Gillingham to me and Mr. Horn talking about it this morning. Um, but potentially running, you know, a school-wide Madden tournament in, in the core after school um, where we bring in, you know, we get some people to bring in a couple of PS4s or Xbox or whatever they play um, and running a Madden tournament or a FIFA tournament or a Rocket League tournament just to kind of, you know, keep the interaction up, give them something to do after school, occupy some time, um, as well as let them have some fun and, and have a little bit of, of social, um, social stuff. Um, there's some more questions in the chat. I'll answer real quick. Um, I saw there was one on student yeah. life. Um, you know, it typically has been only high school, but I am willing to open that up to junior high. And I will, of course, talk to Miss Norman about that and get back to on that. But that is definitely considering the circumstance that we would consider um, having a student life junior high led program also. And then there was one about sports physicals. Um, if, you're, if your athlete was not going to play a sport until the spring, you would not need a sports physical right away. 
Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Tuning, but the only time you would need a physical if you were an incoming sixth grader or a freshman, correct? Um, those guidelines were included in the back to school packets, okay. but I believe so. Unless you're playing a sport, those are the dead, those are the um, criteria. Okay, and then we have two other questions here. Can you participate in AAU and school sports at the same time this year? Um, that question has yet to be answered by the IHSA um, with the, the pushing of um, girls volleyball. Um, I know that is kind of a, a big concern. I don't know if you're talking volleyball um, or AAU as in basketball, um, but I don't think bas basketball hasn't shifted much, so I don't think that should be a problem. But as far as volleyball goes, they have not said if they will be able to compete in both yet, um, but I know that the volleyball club in the area is trying to work out a way to kind of incorporate both at the same time as well. Um, and then will graduating seniors be able to play uh, summer sports? Any idea how many will? Yes, um, graduating seniors will be able to play in summer sports. The, the sport will start before they graduate. Um, and it'll be just like if you make a playoff run in baseball. We did that a couple years ago, and we had graduated seniors still playing. So summer, um, summer uh, sports can be played in by seniors even after they graduate. And then on the end of that, it says how many? Any idea how many will? I have not had the chance to gauge that yet. I'm hoping they all will. It's a great opportunity for them to continue to play. Um, is junior high girls tennis a spring sport? Yes, it is. Um, Yes, it is co-ed as well, and it is in the spring. Um, fall sports that are go still have rescheduling to go through. Did I hear that right? Yes, Mr. Horn. Um, I had all, all schedules were complete from um, the fall all the way through the winter. I mean, all the way through the spring. Um, so I, I, have to, I do have to go back, and pretty much every single one of our schedules has to be at least tweaked to some extent. Uh, because of the date changes, although basketball didn't get moved too much, um, the spring season, um, the, the, the winter season, excuse me, did get shortened a little bit, so there's some games we have to move around and all that stuff. Um, and then we have uh, also two other things we have to talk about today is uh, music and theater. Um, Ms. Benalkin is here to talk a little bit about our music program. Uh, and kind of where we're looking, uh, what, how that'll look this this coming school year. Um, as far as theater goes, um, Mr. McBee, are, are you here? Or did you not get a chance to make it on? I'm not sure if he is on or not. I did not see him. I do not see him. So Mr. McBee is our, our play director. Um, unfortunately, he's not able to be here. Um, but he, he has been working on some things um, to make theater go this year. Um, as far as, you know, um, smaller play skits, um, seeing how things kind of shake out towards the end of the year, um, bringing kids in more in an individual setting, allowing them to act that way, or maybe even virtually. Um, but once school starts, you know, we'll get more information out when it comes to, uh, towards the more theater realm of things. Um, but that's kind of, you know, where we're looking at theater, kind of giving an opportunity to be in theater, but as far as what it's going to look like production-wise, just, just unclear yet. Um, you want to go ahead, Ms. Benalkin, on kind of the music and theater? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, hello, everybody. So the biggest changes for the music department really are with band and choir. And Mr. Stair is planning on taking band and choir classes outside to sing and play their instruments. And of course, they'll be spaced apart, socially distanced, um, everything. If the weather is bad, raining or whatever, and they are inside, they instead will not be playing or singing, but doing score analysis and have more of a flipped classroom where they have playing and performing assignments that they'll do at home. And then when they're in their classroom, they'll be doing music theory and listening and other things like that. So that's how it will look at the junior high and high school. It's the elementary school, Students will still be playing and having their lessons, but their lessons, I believe, will be in the sanctuary at Gloria Day with the windows wide open. And I see Mr. Woodkey is nodding. So that's good. So they can still play, uh, which is really, really nice. In as far as um, district auditions and all state and things like that, our auditions are in October. And the last I have heard is that they are moving towards recording those auditions, but I haven't heard 
anything official on what that will look like or what our festivals will look like going forward. I know several ideas have been um, floated, but our leadership hasn't really given anything specific to us from ILMEA. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mrs. Ernst, you got anything on the realm of student council? Um, so the thing that student council does in the fall really is homecoming. And um, so we have not made any official decisions about it, but the idea of um, the limitation of 50 people in a given spot um, and the football season having been moved, student council is looking at a multiple, um, you know, scenario kind of a thing, you know, so as far as like what we know right now, we know that there's no football and we know that we are limited. And so really a couple of the big things that student council does is um, going to be limited by the ability for big groups of people to be in one place. So the dance gets limited, coronation with no football becomes limited, um, the pep assembly, and that's actually student life. So Rita, you can um, weigh, on, weigh in on that if you want. You know, that gets limited. Um, the um, class competitions, you know, when we do things like that, like if there's attendance where kids aren't actually coming to school, you know, that's gonna be limited too. So what student council is doing is, um, we had a meeting yesterday, and so they are talking to classmates, they are looking at that. Um, there was a questionnaire sent out to student council members this morning. I have heard from a couple of them, and I'm getting good feedback about things from them. So ideas on, you know, what their, preferences do we even worry about tying homecoming to a sport you know if we do do we look at maybe tying it to basketball you know if we have to move the dance do we look at having a winter formal instead of the idea of having a formal in the fall um, obviously there's considerations with that you know if we look at moving it to football season then you have problems with two formals you know with prom coming up you know there's considerations with freshmen and sophomores not being able to go to prom and so that limits and takes away a formal from them so there's all kinds of considerations right now and so the student council members are asking their fellow students you know we've got things in the works in terms of alternatives like I said no decision has even been made to cancel homecoming week um, but we are looking at the idea of you know this is a school-wide participation thing we understand this is not ideal in terms of any kind of you know postponing or whatever something will happen and so the idea of just keeping as many activities in the works as possible keeping things as seamless as possible. We don't want to conflict with activities. We don't want to replace activities. It's being talked about. So just know you will know as soon as we know. So thank you. Awesome, thank you. Are there questions? Let me take a look here. And yeah, see. we had one question on um, band, it looks like. Oh, um, oh. so not me. Oh. All right, thanks. Um, what temperature levels will junior high band be outside both hot and cold? And I don't know the answer to that question. I'm not sure who even decides that. So I, I don't know. And I don't know that it's even been decided because I think part of it is we got to see how the kids react, right? I mean, we need to find out what's going on. We're all of this. I'm so thankful for, for Becky and Henry and, and uh, uh, Monica and all the people, Rita, that have been so creative in trying to come up with new ways of doing things and new ideas of how we can make all this happen. I know there's a question there about senior night and I don't envy uh, Henry at all in trying to figure those uh, types of details out under the circumstances. But all this is a learning process for us and uh, we wanna make sure that we provide the absolute best experiences uh, to our students at all levels. And so uh, a little bit, it's gonna be like almost a tri trial and error type of thing. And I think band outside is going to be one of those things that and Mrs. Mr. Stairs put a ton of thought into it and a whole a bunch of different plans but I think he's going to have to make some adjustments as he as he goes through that uh, process as well just like the rest of us in working through this so it's a good question a uh, very good question but unfortunately I don't, I don't even think Mr. Stair has the answer to that yet. Right and then there is another one that says what will happen with music concerts do we, do we have an answer to that? I mean, I, we can't have music concerts right now as they have been in the past because of the 50 person limit. So we don't really have a, an answer to that right now, so. 
Yeah, and I, you know, I think that that's one thing that I, I try to stress is that this is, a, as far as the document that the IHSA put out, as far as band concerts, as far as homecoming, you know, these things are changing every day. Where we're kind of progressing every day, we're taking, you know, getting new guidelines, getting new modifications to things every day. Um, so things that that are happening today may change a little bit next week, or may change a little bit closer to the homecoming date. And you know, that's one thing that we've really been working to do is kind of um, shift with those changes and and create the best possible plan for our students um, as those changes are coming our way. Um, there's another question: Has the IHSA IHSA issued guidelines should one team member get sick? They have not issued specific guidelines if one team member gets sick. Um, I, I'm expecting that to be something, um, if I had to guess, the IHSA is gonna direct us towards our local uh, county health department to uh, gain guidelines and guidance, I should say, from the Winnebago County Health Department um, as far as you know the, the tracking that they do, um, in the end of in the tracking that we'll do within our school. Um, but as far as the IHSA issuing guidelines, I think they're going to kind of put it for us to go to our local county health departments. Is there any other questions? You guys can just rattle them off at the chat if you have them, or feel free to unmute yourself and ask them. Um, in regards to sports, student council, student life, music, um, orchestra. Um, anything along those lines, you can feel free to. Uh, one we got um, here, appreciate all the communication. Do you know if orchestra students can still share lockers? It is my understanding that they cannot share lockers. So um, we are looking at different options for possibly putting more storage space in some of the practice rooms for our violins and violas in particular are the ones who have to share lockers. So trying to get some more space for them that way. Do you know if there has been any indication uh, uh, of drama theater performance being replaced by a filming class? Um, not actually, I can, go ahead, actually I can talk to that. Um, yes and no. Uh, the word class there throws me off just a little bit because we don't necessarily have any theater classes right now. It's all extracurricular activities. And so it has been discussed about uh, instead of having a drama presenta a presentation, a theater production, of doing it as a video recording as well. We're playing with all kinds of ideas of what that could look like. Uh, Mr. B's bring lots of options. Um, we're still working on the answers, but yes, um, the, the, that could end up with what would be a, basically a recording of a film and, and, and releasing that um, in lieu of an actual theater production where people are gathered together. So that is definitely one of the options that we've talked about. No decisions yet. Awesome, thank you. Um, and then we have another question. Um, what about things like junior high speech team uh, competitions and science Olympiad? Are there guidelines out for those? Um, there are not specific guidelines out for junior high um, activities like those, um, but I can tell you the IHSA did come out with guidelines, and I think the IESA are going to react to those guidelines here pretty quickly. Um, I did get an email earlier today that our math competitions for junior high, the junior high level will be going virtually. Um, and the, that's exactly what the IHSA states in theirs is that activities that can be held, that, happen, that can happen virtually can remain in their traditional seasons. Activities that cannot happen virtually could potentially need to adjust their seasons. Um, so as far as the speech team, um, I think that's gonna come out here soon if the, I, if the IESA feels that they can run um, their, their speech competition via being virtual, or if they feel like they have to have each individual participant in um, live in person in order to judge that properly. So I think those guidelines will be coming out here soon, but they have not yet. Um, I have another question here that, how will orchestra work for kids taking it from home? Right, so right now we're working on building our Canvas courses and they will have access to our orchestra pieces that we are going to be working on in class so that they can also learn the same music that their classmates are working on. 
and they'll have an assist teacher and um, Mrs. Nicolick, I'm hoping it will be me, but we'll, um, we'll just check in and, and it won't be the same, but we'll do our best and I'm, I'm sure it'll be just fine. Awesome, thank you. Do we have anything else? Any other questions? I know this is uh, a lot of information, um, a lot of information that's just kind of come out. Um, I just got another question. Has the junior high basketball schedule changed? At this point right now, the junior high, ba uh, junior high basketball schedules have not changed. But I did mention earlier that we have uh, the Northern Conference, which is our junior high conference athletic directors meeting scheduled for August 11th. Um, so I, I will know more information on that on August 11th. I do not think that they're going to cancel a winter season this early in advance. Um, what I'm interested to see is if the public schools are going to participate in cross country or not and what they decide to do with their volleyball. Um, but as far as junior high basketball, nothing has changed in that realm um, thus far. Any other questions? Nothing. I know it is a lot of information. Um, you know, if, if you have more personal questions and you want to reach out, um, you, you can feel more than happy, you know, I'm more than happy to field those questions um, and try to get back to you as, um, with the best information that I have. Um, you can email me at hrobison at rockfordlutheran.org. Um, that's H-R-O-B-I-S-O-N at rockfordlutheran.org. Um, and then if you have any specific questions for um, the orchestra, student council, um, things that are happening down at RLA um, in regards to sports or student life, feel free to email any administrator, um, anyone on this call. Um, it's just the first letter of their first name and their last name at rockfordlutheran.org. Um, and you can shoot us an email with any questions you have, and we'll be more than happy to um, answer those questions. Um, no other questions? Well, Mr. Wookie, do you want to pray us out? And then if um, you know people want to stay on and ask questions as people log off, they can be more than happy to do that. Um, we'll stay on for a little bit and see if we have any more questions, and then we'll wrap it up. Absolutely. All right. Let's pray again. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much uh, for all of the activities that uh, we're able to have at uh, Rockford Lutheran, for all of the sports teams, um, for all of the uh, music and drama productions, for all of the uh, different uh, student life and student council activities. We're so blessed to be able to have uh, uh, wonderful people to lead these things, uh, awesome coaches and advisors, and uh, we're thankful for all the student participants. Um, all the students that get excited about these things that are that interest them. Lord, we ask that you would um, be with uh, Henry and, and all the people involved as we continue through this process of scheduling and, and figuring out all of the details and logistics. We thank you for all of our parents and their questions and help us to continue to communicate in ways that are always pleasing to you. So bless us this evening. Always keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And Miss Crowley, I'm sorry, Curtis mentioned senior night and I thought it was answered, but I realized it was not answered yet. What will senior night look like? That was one question that I did not get to there. Um, you know, senior night's still up in the air. Um, you know, we, we, we normally do a senior night um, for, you know, I know for you specifically would be cheerleading. We normally do that um, during the football season. Um, and, and that is still an option. You know, football season isn't in the fall, but it's now in the spring and we have the option to, um, you know, recognize those seniors, uh, those cheerleaders and football players um, come the spring. Um, and it's something I'm kind of pondering over. Maybe we do it in the winter as well, um, just to kind of make sure that they do get the opportunity to have a senior night and, and be honored for their hard work and dedication to, to their specific sports program. So if anyone else has any questions, feel free to go in the chat. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, everybody. Uh, being here tomorrow night, there's more Zooms. Uh, tomorrow night, there is um, two, actually. Uh, one, both of them at 7 o'clock. 
but one is about uh, the high school campus and what life looks like there and what a day is going to look like with all the different changes that we've made and then a separate one about the academy and so those will be posted on Facebook um, as well um, for the links for those meetings but uh, yes definitely uh, uh, we'll continue to have these zooms and I pointed out that um, the COVID-19 uh, page on our website too uh, will have those zoom links as well so thanks Mick um, so yes so please join us if you'd like to uh, tomorrow evening same channel. They're leaving. We're down to 30. Good job, uh, Curtis and Henry. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Yes, we will. Yep. Man, they leave quick. Slowly. We're going to get one more question here. I'm confident of it. You think so? No. Did Mr. Horn stay on or is he gone? Looks like his wife is still on, but not him. They can't even Zoom together? Nope. What's up with that? Mrs. Horn, you're not like sharing the same room? I need him in a separate room. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Curtis, I feel like you have a gap on your wall, like where a guitar should be. It, the drum set is right there. You don't you see the just the top of the drum. Um, well, is there a way you could put it on the wall? I mean, it'd look cooler. <laughs> <laughs> like you need to hang a symbol there or something, just something <laughs> slap something. against the wall. Yeah, well, there is. Yeah, there it's isn't a guitar balanced. there because I bang my head against it every time. Yeah, with the drumming, like a so. flat. No, so then you totally should put a symbol there, and like that could be like <laughs> really good. Bing, like every now and then, <laughs> like the just triangle, right? Yes. Like a tambourine. Oh, you guys! All right, looks like we got four more here, and us. All right, <laughs> questions. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Curtis. Appreciate it. Thank nice you. Nice job. Thank you, yep. Becky. Yeah, Thank no, you, you guys. Right. Good. Yep. Henry You're did a great for... job. Lots and lots and lots. Mick's, Mick's going to cut us off here in a second. <laughs> He's going to be like <laughs> out. So. I just don't get enough practice at that. I, I need to get better at it. I, I know. I like, prepared. I'll sit here and talk all night, yeah. right? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Guys. I'll talk to you all soon because I need to make a decision. All right, I, and we'll, like, we'll talk tomorrow. Yes. Becky, we'll talk tomorrow. I, I have an 8.30 AD meeting and then we'll, uh, are you gonna be in the school tomorrow? I can be, what time will you be back? Uh, I don't know. I, don't, I, I mean, noonish? Should, should work. Okay. Should work. I, can I have that meeting at 12.30 <laughs> and I can just log in and show up and then I can come see you. Okay, So Because here's, here's where this is I'm gonna get, it. I know, bye Monica. Here's where this is gonna get tricky for me is like, I need to nail down a DJ and I need to rent the tents I and I need, like, yep. I need to do all Absolutely. that soon, yep. so. We can talk I, tomorrow for sure. Perfect, bye. All right. Adios.